This is my parents' first time in Germany, so we wanted to show you what we did with them and what they think about life in Germany. Welcome back to our channel. You know us, we're the McFalls. I'm Sarah. And I'm Kevin. And we're a family of six with four kids. A cat and two hamsters. Doing that mental calculation. How many pets do we have now? <laughs> <laughs> and Oma and Opa. And Oma and Opa, that's right. <laughs> Grandma and Grandpa. Which we don't call them that either. We have weird names for them that if we even said on TV, nobody would understand. So it's a family inside thing. <laughs> Now you've yeah. got their curiosity peaked. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So when Gabriel, our oldest, was really little, he made up a name for them because he couldn't say grandmama and granddaddy, which is what we say in Georgia in the South. He couldn't say that. So he instead said Jaji and Jibu. Jibu. And those names stuck. And yeah. that has been their names. So only our family understands that. But I know a lot of families have cute names for their grandma and grandpa. Yeah. We're not the only weird ones, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is Jimmy and this is Bonnie, my dad and my mom. So who do I look the most like? I think him. Yeah, don't I look like him? <laughs> I look the most like my dad. I look a lot like my his mom and aunt and yeah. So this is mom and dad's first time coming to see us in Germany. You know, there's a saying that a quote I really like that says, the best way to travel abroad is to live with the locals. And I truly believe that's true. You know, when you travel to a new country, we all want to go see the most famous and touristy sites there are. And you wait in long lines, sometimes out in the heat or out in the cold. And you don't really learn about the culture of the people or day to day life, the day to day life or what they love to do or what they do in their spare time or what matters to them and what's important to them and what, what they are like. You know, just by seeing the Eiffel Tower or something famous. So, or uh, Neuschwanstein. <laughs> yeah, or Neuschwanstein. And Americans always want to come to Germany and see Neuschwanstein. So mom and dad got the full living with the locals, even though I wouldn't call ourselves we're, we're, locals. We're pseudo-locals. Yeah, we're, I won't say we're German or anything, but they got a much more local experience here in Germany than uh, an American tourist would normally get. And especially because we live in a little town, in, you know, that nobody would likely come to, you know, there's not yeah. many American tourists who come to our town. Yes, yeah, it's more mostly German tourists and then Dutch, a lot of Dutch. Well, I think it's because of the skating rink. Ah, the skating rink, okay. Yeah, so the first thing, most tourist experience and locals is the food. Yeah. So they did get to try some German food. We went to a few Bavarian restaurants. Surprisingly, actually, we got some really delicious salads, didn't we? We had really good salads. And and then mom got to try something right out of our fridge that she ended up really liking, which was? Quark. I love quark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had never heard of quark. And it's a cheese and, and not a yogurt. It, it's the cheese. It's not a yogurt. It's not from Star Wars. <laughs> it's not from Star Wars. Quark sounds Quarks. like it should come from yeah. some or like a subatomic particle right. or something yeah. in outer space. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, because a quark is actually a subatomic right. particle. It is. It is. <laughs> so when I read the name on the on the container, I'm like, quark. <laughs> what is that? What is that? Very yummy. Yeah, so mom enjoyed quark, which was really cool because that's a big thing in Germany. And I'm not sure too many tourists would end up really knowing they're even having quark unless it's like in a cake. But then that's why they wouldn't know they're having quark. So yeah, definitely something you get as a local. Yeah, so even though mom and dad mostly eat gluten free, we brought out so much yummy looking bread, they couldn't help themselves. <laughs> yes. So uh, fingers crossed they don't go home with a lot of gluten side effects. Actually, in Germany, we hold our thumbs. Yep, don't cross your fingers. You have to hold your thumbs Did for you good luck. Did you know that? <laughs> no, I didn't know, Did that. You know that. For good luck, you hold your thumbs instead of cross your fingers. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I didn't know that. Learn something new, yeah. Kevin would go to the bakery every morning as he often does. Get a big spread of bread. Mm -hmm. 
you can't not try the bread. It looks so so delicious. Yeah. But we should say it was rolls. It was brochin. Yeah. It was simon, simon, and not yeah, not a so loaf much. loaves of bread. But so yeah, did you guys like the bread? Pretzels. Oh yeah, on oh, really the pretzels tasty. too. Yeah, the pretzels. The fresh pretzels. Yeah, the big, the big, the big pretzels. Yeah, yeah. they're really good. Those were good. Those were good. And the last thing that we had over and over and over and over again was gelato, Italian mm. gelato. <laughs> I was quite impressed with how Germans love. Ice cream and gelato. Yeah. It was a, kind of a surprise. A surprise. Yeah, you see everybody, every town, anywhere you go, everyone's at the at the ice dealer, the, the gelato store. Yeah. Yep. Even if all the other stores are closed. The That's ice right. cream right. shop yeah. is open. Shop is well, open. it was Easter Monday, and we, we were walking through a town, and we found nothing else open except one of the ice cream shops. Yes. <laughs> Freezing cold. Yeah, we got it <laughs> in the cold. And we're sit standing there eating it and loving it. And shivering, yeah. but but didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a favorite flavor? Well, eating ice cream with gloves is an interesting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think what mom you liked the stracciatella. I did. Yeah, it's I like did. Vanilla with like chocolate, chocolate chips or chocolate pieces in it. It's really mm -hmm. good. And I like the vanilla. It was very good. Yeah, too. even just plain vanilla or plain chocolate. The chocolate is so rich. I never rich. tasted it. I should have tasted yeah. it. Yeah. Very rich. And then another thing that we always serve at every meal, and our kids now, our two oldest boys prefer having sparkling water now with every meal, and we have to buy tons of sparkling water. We, I know we need to get a soda stream. I know you all are going to give us the comments. Get a soda stream. <laughs> Maybe we will. Uh, but anyway, we're always buying sparkling water, and so mom and dad ended up drinking a lot of sparkling water. And it really helped after the flight because you get kind of feel yuck and gross when and the jet lag and dehydrated. Dehydrated. Um, we don't just buy sprudel wasser, we buy mineral wasser. And we didn't even discover until mom looked at the ingredients list. She's like, what's in this stuff? And it was like full of minerals. <laughs> so no wonder it made you feel better. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so mom and dad like mineral wasser. So that's pretty cool. And so we did go to a nice Bavarian restaurant uh, not far from the house here. And uh, we were looking through the menu and they wanted to get the salmon. And it says, you know, lax filet, you know, filet of salmon. So like, okay, let's go for it. And actually all three of them I got it too. ordered the lax filet and it came out, it was raw. And I, there was it one was, word. It was cured. Cured, right. And the word cured, now I can't even remember what it was, but that was the one key word in, in, <laughs> in the, the description. description. That I did, that's the one word I didn't understand in the description that it said it was cured. So we didn't know those can be raw. So even after two years of living here, we still got something on the menu that we didn't know what it was. Surprise. And it was a surprise. And it was really funny when the food arrived, we all were like, <laughs> looking at each other and I thought oh no mom and dad are not gonna like this fish <laughs> they're gonna be so disappointed it was the very first meal we ate out and I thought oh no this is not a good start <laughs> but mom ate her entire plate and really liked it I liked it as well oh I ate it all too oh you did too yeah, okay I wasn't sure it came with a good dill sauce that yes I the, that sauce. the, the dill mustard sauce yes yeah well, and your son's been begging you to try yes, this forever, right? And he has a cold smoker that he uses at home. Right. So he knew My what brother. we were talking about. So a few things we forgot to mention were that we introduced my parents to raclette. It was their first time having it and they really loved it. We also took them to get kebabs, which is a common street food in Germany, and they loved having a kebab teller. Lastly, Kevin gave my dad a beer each night, and he gave it a big thumbs up. We didn't get any pictures of it, though. The only thing they didn't enjoy, however, was currywurst. They're not big fans of curry. So the second big thing that mom and dad got to experience, which maybe some tourists in Germany do get to experience, but was what, daddy? Dad got to do it. Driving. On the Autobahn. <laughs> <laughs> From here to Salzburg. Yeah. Without any practice. No practice. <laughs> On a six speed <laughs> car. Which he hasn't driven in quite a while. It's been a few years, but I'm familiar with driving manual transmissions, yes, but it was a new one. It felt di different than what I was used to. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was quite an experience, though. So I understood some of the traffic signs, but I had Sarah in the back seat telling me what all the signs meant. So it was 
Sort of like having a true and welcome backseat driver. <laughs> Kind of a nervous wreck, yeah. There, we, you was. can admit it. I was a nervous wreck. Was. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, because yeah, Dad was getting used to the manual trans transmission, and I've been studying for my license, so I do know what most of the the road signs mean and the traffic rules now. So <laughs> I was like, no, Dad, you can't get in that line. You can't do that. I was thoroughly entertained watching Sarah interact with her dad as the two of them trying to figure out what the other one was trying to do. So I just sat back and enjoyed it. Mm, she did, yeah. <laughs> but, Dad, you did a really good job. There were a few times we were not sure which, like, the traffic circles, you know, there are a few traffic circles in their area in the U.S., but not many. And so we had to drive around so many traffic circles, <laughs> and Dad just had to keep driving because we weren't sure which turn to use. And we were telling him, but it didn't make sense. And, and then, so we, so we just kept driving around the traffic just, circles. Just around. <laughs> Eventually, okay. we got out. So funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then, but then the big question is, what was your top speed on the autobahn? Yeah, Dad. Yeah, I wish I could report something better. <laughs> there was only one twenty. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, I was like, oh. <gasps> <laughs> but that's still probably at the top or higher than most speed limits in America. Yes. Yeah. So now Dad can go home and tell his guy friends. I, I drove on the 70, German autobahn. Seventy-five miles an hour on the autobahn. Oh no, he yeah. could actually say I drove one hundred and twenty. <laughs> yeah, autobahn. right. And then it sounds. Yeah, even just better. say one hundred and twenty. Yeah. yeah. Seventy-five down. doesn't Ooh. sound impressive because he can do that on Highway seventy-five right outside right. Atlanta. Yeah. I would have freaked two women out really bad if I went one hundred and twenty <laughs> miles per hour. <laughs> <laughs> What well, Sarah says, how fast are you going, Kevin? <laughs> oh, no, when Kevin goes super fast, on that, we need, we've got to do a whole driving video. Yeah, and once I get my license, we will. We will talk about the driving test and all that. The strange part of all of it was that I was in Germany about 48 hours, and I was allowed to drive on any road I wanted to without experience. Sarah's been here can't. for two years, and she can't. <laughs> It's so dumb. Like, it's just so dumb. <laughs> this is when laws don't make sense. <sighs> yeah. And actually have been studying and know the actual laws and can read German and I can't drive and he can. Like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. And another mode of transportation that we made sure mom and dad got to experience was the trains, which they have. You did maybe ride a train in France. It's not your first time on a European yes, train. France, yeah. yeah. Uh, we used to live in France. So... But yeah, we took the train back and forth to a town that's only 10 minutes away, so it wasn't <laughs> that much, but, but well, that's the whole point, to take the train to the next town over, you know, use it as a transportation around, around in your area. Yeah, true. Yeah. Because we were going to a, a parade and, you know, everything is closed, all the parking, everything's closed down in the, in the city, so it's much easier to take the train than try and park. Yeah. And dad was feeling so confident taking the trains that he, when we were in town today, he said, well, I'll just take the train back by myself. I, the kids don't can all go home. I'll just come home by myself because he wanted to stay in the town longer. Yes. I was like, wow, dad, go you. That's adventurous. Yeah, <laughs> I felt confident doing it. It was easy. It was easy. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Cool. So the next thing is German supermarkets and stores. Uh, Mom had said when we first got here, I just want to see how you live your daily life, like what you guys do every day. So we took her to all our favorite stores, like Edeka, which is where we get all our groceries from. We took her to DM. So what did you think of Edeka? Is it like way different than the U.S. or anything? It's, it's somewhat different. The in, first thing I noticed is the shelves are shorter. Hmm. They don't yeah, go up they as don't high. Go. That's true. They don't. And there's not as much product up top. Like we have hmm. in the U.S., hmm. but um, it's organized about the same. I mean, things are in a little bit different place, but and of course, everything's in German. So <laughs> I had no idea what things were, but it was fun to walk up and down the aisles and try to figure out what things were. Well, what about the meat counter? Was the meat counter any different? Oh, that was interesting because there's no. Was there prepackaged meat? No, not no. like not like chicken in prepackaged. Right. Well, some stores around here have that, but this Edica doesn't. So right. yeah, if you want chicken breast or whatever, you have to go to the meat counter. You go to the meat counter. We call it butcher. I don't know what the word is here, but um, Metzgerei. Metzger. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And you tell them what you want, and they. Uh, 
package it up, or weigh it out and package it up and then hand it to you. So it's like an old, uh, old fashioned butcher, which is the way stores used to be. And there are some butcher stores around us that we have gone to. And that's the way it, it functions. Everything's laid out in the case and you pick out what you want. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, like in the US, if you want to get ground beef or hackfleisch, you it's always prepackaged, nearly always in, in the US, unless you go to an old fashioned butcher. Yeah, which is very, I don't know anyone who does that. I'm sure there are people, but it's not very common. So yeah, here in Germany, every time you, at least in our Edeka, let us know if it's different in your grocery store, but we always have to ask for it and they have to package it for us. So yeah, it takes more time. It's a little more time consuming, but yeah. And mom, one of mom's favorite stores in the US guys is actually Aldi. So she wanted to see what Aldi is like in the country of origin, you know, a real Aldi. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you think mom? Let's, what did you see? Oh, it was great. The layout's about the same because I've been in several Aldi's in the US that different layouts according to the lay, the footprint of the store. The produce was better that, than what I have in the store that's closest to me, but it, it looked very similar. The same brands that I see in the Aldi in the U.S. are, of course, here mm -hmm. in Germany because they're German brands. So I felt at home. And what do you call the aisle in the middle with all the different things? in The treasure aisle. The treasure aisle. That's what all, you know, yeah. they have all the random the different seasonal. stuff, seasonal different things. So they had the, they had the treasure aisle here too. Yes. Yeah. And in the U.S., the people in Aldi get to sit down. Well, behind they sit, the counter. They sit the down. The, the cash cashier. register. Yeah. They sit down in Aldi. Yeah. Yeah. It, in the U.S. too. But that's, that's the only grocery store pretty, pretty much, much where they do. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, and do they also package your groceries really fast yes. in, in the U.S.? Yes. Okay. Because there's UPC symbols. You said all over the package. All over said. the package, so oh. it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be uh, gone through in a particular fashion. You just pick up the item and on one, uh, all four or six sides, it'll have a UPC symbol, and you just it goes fast. Yeah. I wonder if it's the same here. It probably is that they have UPC symbols all over the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. barcodes. Yeah, so that's cool. So those two things from Germany did make it over there, and there's many German products. Yes. We have a I'm guessing they're imported, not made in the U.S., but probably imported, I would guess, because people have compared ingredients between the two countries, and they're the same, so it's probably imported. It often says, because I look, because y'all are here, on the German brands, and it, it'll say Aldi product. Hmm. So I don't know exactly where it's made. Huh. It's, you know, imported, or they got factories here, but... And do they have the coin-operated grocery carts yes, in America, too? we certainly do. Yeah, because that's not uh -huh. a thing in most grocery stores in America to keep all the carts together with the coins to encourage people to bring them back and get their coin back. Right. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to have the outside help and, and you know, mm -hmm. they can run the store with a much smaller group of people. Yeah. But yeah. the interesting thing to me was how much it was the same. Yeah, here. Here yeah. in Germany yeah. and it in the very U.S., much the, same. Yeah. The, the brand is is pretty much the same. Oh, and do they do you get bags? You don't get bags in Aldi, right? No, no, you never do. Yeah, and I remember when Aldi first opened up near us, and that was a huge deal. Everybody was talking about it. You better bring your own bags. You can't go to Aldi without your bags. Right, cause American <laughs> grocery stores, at least where we're from, there's some places in the States where they don't give out bags. Um, but at least where we're from in Georgia, yeah, they, they'll give you groceries and they'll bag them for you and provide the bags. And yeah, in Germany, they, you don't ever get that. <laughs> this should be your See, and Deb, look, close out. Yeah, so I think that's interesting that uh, the, the Aldi chain came to the U.S. and so much of the German culture and ways they operate their stores stayed the same. That's pretty fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, so you guys let us know. I'm sure you guys know where are the products made. Are they imported into the U.S. or are they made in the U.S.? I know you guys are going to know, so let us know in the comments below. So as many of you know, we live in the southern part of Germany, near sort of kind of near Munich, Salzburg. So there's a lot of countryside around here, a lot of farmland and stuff, which I mean, there's countryside all over Germany. But one of the first things Daddy noticed on the first day we were he was here, I think we were walking him around town and he's like, there's solar panels everywhere. Everybody has solar panels on their roofs. Mm -hmm. That was something he noticed, which a lot of Americans notice that when they come here, like, whoa, everybody's got solar panels. And you can see them throughout the countryside as you're driving all over buildings and homes. And they even have solar panel fields, just gigantic fields full of solar panels and windmills. 
and stuff, which you can see out more in California and out west in the U.S. But yeah, I did see. notice that. Kevin informed me that some of them were actual solar photovoltaic panels, and some of them were, I guess, hydronic. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're called. called. Anyway, they heat water right. on the roof, and they, of course, store it in tanks in the house. And that was interesting. Yeah, it's quite common. And so another place I had to take them, you know, I do so much skiing and hiking around here, is to take them up a mountain. We drove a little ways up to an alm and parked the car and then hiked a little ways up to the middle station of Hochfeld and then took the cable car to the very top. And so, you know, it's a mountain that's not very far from us, but I mean, I don't think there's very many people who come to Germany and say, I'm going to get to the top of Hochfeld. You know, it's, it's a <laughs> International tourists don't know of this mountain. <laughs> yeah, it's a great experience, you know, but it's not like, it's not like going up uh, to Zugspitze or Watzmann or one yeah. of the famous yeah. mountains, but still yeah. it was a great experience and is beautiful. You could see, we saw Großglockner, the highest mountain in all of, of Austria. It was a really clear day, so we could see all the way and identify it. So it was a really nice trip, wasn't it? It was. It was a fabulous, fabulous experience. There was still snow on the ground. There was about three feet of snow because there was a bench up at the top that was covered. <laughs> so I figured it was about two and a half, three feet. I don't know what that is. Almost a meter. Meters. The other thing I noticed is when we got to the top, it's a very narrow top with sheer drop on mm. all sides and mm. there's no fences mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can walk to the very edge and look over and i did slip one time i had to grab <laughs> hold of jimmy and i thought well this will be fun both of us are just going to go straight down the big slide <laughs> just be a big slide uh -oh. and while we were up there paragliders because it was a beautiful day it was really beautiful great. day it was sunshiny it was cold but it was bright and clear the paragliders were up there taking off and they're taking off below us and we're standing there watching these paragliders get all their equipment and then they just jump off the mountain and I thought we're above, above we're above them and then of course they catch a thermal and go on up and then they're flying up above us it was fascinating absolutely fascinating and then of course you just look all the way around and see all the Alps and it was Kimsey Kimsey yep the lake. the lake we could see the lake over mm -hmm. so it was gorgeous. It was a beautiful day, and it was a terrific hike. Quite strenuous, but you I enjoyed it. it. Yeah, it was fun. It was a great day. Yeah, the view was unbeatable. I enjoyed that so much. It was. I guess it was just above freezing, but it wasn't cold. Yeah, it was probably three degrees, three or yeah. four degrees, but it was sunny. It was it, sunny, and the view was clear. We could see for miles. Jimmy got sunburned. There was so yeah. much, yeah, mm -hmm. a reflection off the snow and. And what's great with Hochfeld is that you get the 360 view, of course, but you get two different views. You get the one view the off plains. into the mm -hmm. Alps, and you see all of the mountains in Großglockner and Soldentagshorn and, and all of them. And then you look the other direction, it looks out over the plain, and you can see out forever across the Kimsee and the big lake. And so you get to see this, the big plain as well as the mountains. So you get sort of both views, which is really kind of unique. And we could see their little village. From way, we, I think we were up at 5,500 feet. It was 16. Yeah, it was about that. 1647. 1674 meters. Meters, yeah, something like that. But it was, it was, it was a great day. Oh yeah, and going back to the the sheer cliff and the no fences. You know, that's not something you would see in the U.S. You would see fences, but I mean, Mom actually wanted a fence because it was a little scary. <laughs> Sometimes we want fences, Germany. Okay, but yeah, and Mom's like, yeah, this you'd never see it like this in America. It's too litigious for this. I, I, it's hard to have children up at that top of that mountain because uh, you're a little worried they'll just fall right down. Well, like the first time we went up there and you, you walk across, you, you have to go from where the cable car is to the very, very peak. And you have to go across this sort of snow bank. And it wasn't really- The pathway really is what, this wide? Yeah, it was like that, you know, just a couple meters wide and it was snow covered and the kids are all messing around or whatever. And it, what, that side wasn't like a sheer drop. They wouldn't like died or anything if they fell off they that. But, but they go down a long, <laughs> long way. <laughs> they slide. So and I remember hard. being very nervous yeah. watching my kids climb up to the top. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I liked that not having fences though, just the view. Yeah, it just doesn't. Just the view. Yeah.
sometimes oh. unobstructed. You can always put a fence a few feet down. And... <laughs> right. Well, if I drug you halfway down the mountain, he would have said, we need a fence. Wow. <laughs> 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 So the last thing is that my parents got to experience like true, authentic, German, non-touristy culture. <laughs> Not Oktoberfest, <laughs> right? They got to experience real German culture. And the first thing was... Yeah, we went to dinner with one of the friends of one of our son's classmates. And they invited us to dinner, knew that our, um, that our parents were coming and invited us over and had just a really wonderful time to go to a German person's house. I mean, sure, yeah. we're living in Germany. We're pseudo, you know, pseudo yeah. locals, but it's different to go to a right. friend's house, you know, and they made this amazing, you know, German meal. And just to see, you know, how a German person's house is laid out and just to go to another town. And so, yeah, it was really cool, you know, to see how the kids, you know, the, the kids playing together and all that. Speaking so German. Yeah, it was a really cool, cool experience to see a place, you know, the local place. They, they spoke English very well and spoke German amongst themselves with their children. But they were very gracious, very kind. And so hospitable to us. The husband is a chef, so he made us a chef, yeah, really uh, high quality meal that was very, very good. And we just appreciated their hospitality and seeing how they lived in their house and a nice terrace outside. And we got to go out there, even though it was raining, it had partial cover over it, but <laughs> um, they had a beautiful place. We enjoyed that evening. Well, I enjoyed it too. It was very, they were very gracious and welcoming and kind to bring us in and, yes. and feed us that well. Uh, they asked questions about how we lived and we got to ask questions about how they lived and the differences in the two countries and how things are run. And it was, it was a very interesting evening. Yeah, they ask you a lot of questions about what life in, is yeah. like in the U.S. And... Well, and like the wife is a doctor and, and Bonnie's a nurse. And so they're talking medical stuff. They can talk medical talk, mm -hmm. yeah. We did. <laughs> yeah, we should throw that in, Kevin, because everyone on our channel who knows us well knows Kevin's an engineer. And guess what my dad was for all these years? Engineer. An engineer. <laughs> <laughs> they say you marry what you're used to. Well, there you go. <laughs> Both with degrees from Georgia Tech. Yeah, yeah deg degrees from the same university <laughs> in Georgia. So, yeah, when I got the text from my friend that she was inviting us all over, which was eight of us, yeah. over to their house for a huge feast. She did not want us to bring any food. Um, I was just blown away. I mean, it's very hospitable, very gracious. And yeah, it was great. It was. I was really glad that mom and dad got to experience that. So, and then the second cultural thing they got to see was, and I'm, I don't say this quite well, but the Georgi Ritt. Yeah, the Georgi Ritt in, in Traumstein. It's hard to say, Georg. Yeah. Yeah. But the St. George, St. George riding, you know, where they have all the horses and this big parade. That comes from written from, yeah. ah, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Yeah, so it's the, the parade for this, the patron saint of our area, which is St. George, and the one who kills the dragon. We have the best patron saint out there. <laughs> Yeah, so we get the cool one that kills dragons, the dragon slayer, the knight who kills dragons. It's awesome. Yeah, so anyway, we went to the the parade. And what did you guys think of it? It was beautiful. It was uh, fun to see. It. All the towns nearby were represented and uh, a lot of horses, a lot of beautiful horses, some large, some small, some dark, some light, and, you know, obviously all well-trained. It was impressive. And the horses were all decorated. Their manes, they had headdresses almost draped yeah. over their manes and over their the front of their heads. And um, they were obviously, like Jimmy said, well trained and, and did their their trots that they that they do mm -hmm. like for show. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then there was the, the different villages would have their bands be pulled in trailers by the horses uh, that, that didn't have riders that just they pulled the trailers mm -hmm. and the bands would go by playing it was a great parade mm -hmm. we enjoyed it and very colorful the different villages walked by with all their flags and and uh the children that would they would be in their native dress and it was a very colorful parade it was very very enjoyable mm -hmm. and that was for Ostern montag you know, Easter Monday, which is a national holiday here in Germany and a huge holiday. So it's cool that they got to experience some Easter culture, 
since that is a huge holiday here in Germany. I mean, it's a big holiday in the U.S. too, so it's maybe cool to see how it's done here in Germany. We did some of our own American culture because our, our kids love the Easter egg hunts. Now, I know you guys also have Easter egg hunts, so that's not that much different between our countries. But, you know, with our Easter egg hunts, we get plastic eggs and put candy inside them. And as far as I know, that's not so common here in Germany. You put out, what, little toys and pieces of candy, but not like whole eggs with candy stuffed inside them. And you also put out hard boiled eggs. Um, I know Feely from Germany was saying that's what they do. And so let me know, do any of you guys buy plastic eggs? Because we can even find them in the stores. If you find them at Real, there was like four in a pack. <laughs> like we bought 60. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have four kids, okay? So they only got 15 eggs each. But <clears throat> that's common in America though. You just buy like massive amounts of eggs and put them out and kids come home with a whole basket full of eggs, so. Because if you don't have 60, they find them too fast. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then they strike so. hunts over. Yeah, in five minutes, it's done. Yeah. But I did notice there were many different um, towns around here saying they were having an Oster Eiersuche. Then one last authentic thing we did is go to a real uh, hunter's shop here, you know, in the in the local town. Uh, Dad, you know, he's uh, he likes to go be outdoors and do outdoor stuff and uh, collects knives. And you went to you wanted to get get a knife. When he goes on hunting that. trips with his friends, right? Yeah. So yeah. So I wanted to have something that was not a touristy type souvenir, but I wanted a souvenir, yes. something to remember by. So I went to the. The store and bought a nice uh, knife made by Frederick Hartkoff. It was a family-run ah, yeah. business in Solgenen. Sol Solingen. Solingen. Thank you. <laughs> and it's, you know, just a very nice knife. So some I'll remember by. And actually, when we went into the store, Dad's like, I want a made in Germany knife. And, you know, they had tons and tons of knives, but they only had a few different brands, you know, maybe, you know, maybe 10 or 15 different knives to choose from that were made in Germany. So they had to talk amongst themselves to say they, what brands are actually yeah. made in Germany. So I guess there are a lot of Swiss yes. ones, and I'm not sure if Austria oh, sure, sure, probably Swiss. I'm not ones. sure where all the other ones were from, but there weren't a whole lot to choose from. But the ones they did have were really nice. They were interesting. I, there were several brands that I, could buy in the U.S. easily. Right, you know, sure. And, uh, but I didn't want to go back for that. Right. <laughs> and of course, we did things that grandma and grandpas or omas and opas do with the grandkids. And we had lots of silly playtime and played. We, they did get to play some German games, or at least one German game. We played Mensch Ergere die Schnicht. And they played Mensch auf Erde when we went to the playground. They That's played right. the game on the playground. <laughs> The first two days, we just walked them around our local town and showed them the Grundschule and the kindergarten and the local church. Local church. Got and gelato. we went to a local cafe. <laughs> Got, gelato. Got gelato. So we did like the very normal, like, what the McFalls do when they don't have anything else to do <laughs> to her. Mm -hmm. And we spent the first year of our lives here at, that, at the playground all the time. So. Yeah. yeah, so by walking around the town, they got to see how easy it is to walk around here and how you can get around by foot and by bicycle and train and all that, which is really quite different than how life, the lifestyle is in the U.S. Right. Oh, and I will say that Dad was really trying his best. He was so polite to everyone in the restaurants and really trying to say, Danke, Danke. He was trying to use Germany, he kept asking us different words, and he liked asking the grandkids, hey, tell me what they're saying. And he, we got the grandkids to, uh, our kids to interpret things the whole time, so that was fun. <laughs> They got, they like showing off too. You know, kids always like when they know more than an adult, you know, <laughs> yeah, right. so yeah. they got to show off to their grandparents and know more than them, you know. They were great interpreters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you enjoy getting to see the perspective from my parents and get to meet my parents. We're so glad both of you came and we had a wonderful time, and yes. I don't want them to leave tomorrow. We might have to lock them in the house and not let them out. Or at least only let them out once they buy their next set of tickets to come visit. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's the hardest part about living here is definitely being far away from them and, and Kevin's family as well. We don't like being far away from family members. That's not a perk <laughs> of moving abroad. <laughs> Um, we had a wonderful time with our grandchildren. Yes, we did. did I you? got to do something special with each one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're yeah. all different, so you have some. There's always something special just for them to do. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. All right. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Cheers.
This is my parents' first time in the U in the U.S. <laughs> Start over. <laughs> what country are we in? Um, it's been a long afternoon. <laughs> cheese. cheese. <laughs> I forgot to tell you. We say cheese. Do you want to try again and say cheese? It's choose, like choose. almost like choo choo. <laughs> You're saying choose. 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 Yes. Choose. 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 Choose.